In the last video, we talked about this pattern you want to avoid with big customers. And in this video, we're going to go through some ideas about how to avoid it so that you're able to keep making good product and they get the best possible thing that still fits their specific needs and does what they want it to do. So we're trying to do the best thing for everybody here. Now, the first strategy, and it's probably the most important, is to anchor to problems and needs and propositions instead of just saying, well, you know, I need a blue button. I need a drag and drop thing here. And you've learned a lot about how to do that. That's what we did with the venture design process. So unpack that, work through the problem that they're trying to solve, the user that they need to do this with, offer to help them, even if it's not part of something you're going to get paid for. If it's a real issue, my advice is to offer to go work with their users, spend time with them, do the diligence that maybe they haven't had the chance to do, and get to the right answer. Arm yourself with the data to help answer the question appropriately in the way that you normally would, which is really the, the second part of, of this. The best way to be able to use that strategy of anchoring to problems, making sure you understand them, and then suggesting solutions you think make sense is to already have the data. So the more, this is one of the reasons why it's very challenging for a smaller company to have a really big customer as their first customer. It seems exciting, like a great idea, and if you can get them, maybe you should, but it's going to be very hard for you because they're very likely, you know, every customer is going to be different. But they have probably the prerogative to dictate to you what they, they want built. Whereas that, you know, if you have a nice agile environment going and they don't follow that kind of process, that, that could be very detrimental. So the best way is to already have the data. One founder I talked to at Travelfy, this is a startup situation, who builds software that travel companies use on their sites had a in-house brand, so their own kind of teeny little travel service that really wasn't even the point of, of what they wanted to have as a business. They built it so that they could collect data, they could watch travelers use their solution before they took it to big customers that, that run a lot of customers through so that they could have that understanding and take that to their customers to help them with data-driven ideas about how to pair the right problem and the right solution. So having the data sooner and being able to talk about narrative, talk about specific metrics that you've observed is a really important way to be able to use that strategy of going to them and working through the problem and then pairing it with the right solution. A couple of other things that are really handy is training. One, training is good because you often usually will get paid for it and it's a great way to kind of indoctrinate and do need finding. So indoctrination, I mean, it's a little bit of a hyperbolic term, but if you look at, for instance, Cisco, the network equipment company, one of their most durable assets is their training program. They've become kind of the de facto certification for network routing and switching. So when people ask, hey, you know, should we do it this way? The, you know, Cisco certified engineer will say, well, you know, I learned from Cisco that, you know, we should do it this way. So, yeah, we should. So it's not to say that Cisco's training is um, strictly an indoctrination tool. The reason why it's successful is it is quite good and very useful, but it is a good place for them to, you know, if there's three different perspectives on how to do something and one of them is sort of the Cisco's predominant point of view that they design their products around, well, certainly that's the thing that the Cisco-trained engineer is going to learn about, and there are a lot of those, and that helps Cisco to kind of promulgate their, their view, and that helps them create alignment between the problems the customers need solved and the solutions that they want to present for those things. Training is also a great way to do need finding, basically meaning that you're looking at how customer using your product, where are the gaps, what are things you could do better. When I was running my last company, I always tried to get out and do training with end users. It was so, so, so helpful to see them actually using the product and things that were hard for them. Sort of like doing a real life usability study where the subject is already motivated, already you know, in their natural environment using the product, and you can see all sorts of fascinating things about basically things you can do better. So, Training is a really good tool to not only train people, but also to accomplish these other goals and, and bring your point of view about the world and your understanding 
of your customers' problems in line with a set of solutions and ideas, and most importantly, an ongoing process for marrying those two that works for both parties. So those are some ideas about how to approach these things with big customers, these, these demands that they may have in a way that allows you to keep building good product and get them what they want.